We're having so much fun with these uh, problems, I just can't stop. Let's um, add another variation. Let's start down here, and let's uh, kick a ball up onto the cliff. So this is sort of a variation on our um, send a ball over a wall. It just so happens in this case we have a very, very, very wide wall. And if we wanted to be um, really complex, we could make the wall go down again and go back up. We could just have like a really like a little obstacle course here. We won't do that for now. We'll just say that's an infinitely long wall. So let's uh, take a ball. Um, let's put it, let's say, uh, 20 meters from the edge of this cliff. Let's make it a 30 meter tall cliff. And let's shoot something up in the air. Let's say um, 40 meters per second. And let's shoot it really steep this time just for fun. 70 degrees. Okay. So 70 degrees, 40 meters per second, standard problem, 40 meters per second, we have to break it up into V0x, V0y, and our angle is 70 degrees. V0y is going to be 40 sine 70. You still see that? Let's move that over a little bit. 40 sine 70. So 40 sine 70 is 37.6 meters per second. V0x is going to be 40 cosine 70. And 40 cosine 70 is going to be 13.7 meters per second. Going back over here, V0, V, A, T, delta X, X, and Y, V0 and X is 13.7 meters per second, 37.6 meters per second, 0, negative 9.8. I just realized we did all of this. I don't even know what I'm asking yet. I just drew a picture and gave you some parameters, and I just started going. Uh, what shall we look for here? I mean, clearly we want to know where the land, where the ball lands. So let's just ask that question: Where does the ball land? And because we haven't done it for a while, let's say, um, what is final velocity? You could also ask for maximum height. You could also ask for time in the air, and we may get some of that stuff along the way, but we won't explicitly look for them. All right, so where does the ball land? Just like with our wall problem, I need to figure out what's going to happen at this point. All right, I need to figure out, let's go look over here. I'm going to just re-sketch this real, real quick. I need to figure out which path does this take. If my ball is here and gets launched, does it go up? and land right here, in which case it's going to get a negative number. Is it going to go up and over, in which case I'm going to get a positive number? Or is it going to be in that middle path, and it's going to be between 0 and 30, and it's going to actually hit the cliff? So I need to decide which of those three paths it's going to take. And in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, what's the height of the ball when I've reached that horizontal cliff? At what height, after I've traveled 20 meters, what's the height? If the height is less than 0, it's that first path. If it's between 0 and 30, it's the second path. And if it's more than 30, it's going to be the top path. So let's figure out that height when I've traveled 20 meters. So to do that, I have to say, oh, I'm going to travel 20 horizontal meters. I can say delta x is equal to v0t plus 1 half at squared. And um, acceleration is 0, so 20 is equal to 13.7t. T is equal to 20 divided by 13.7, 1.46 seconds. So we can plug in. It takes 1.46 seconds to get to the wall. Share that 1.46 seconds, 
and now I can say, let's figure out what the height is. Delta y equals c0t plus 1 half at squared. So delta y is equal to 37.6 times 1.46 plus 1 half times negative 9.8 times 1.46 squared. Don't forget that square. We'll often forget that square and then not know what's going on. 37.6 times 1.46. We end up with 43.09 minus 0.46 squared. 10.44 minus 10. We end up with 32.6 meters. So that's the delta y. 32.6 meters. That's the delta y when we've traveled 1.46 seconds, which is 20 meters away. So it is higher than the 30 meters of the cliff, so we clearly have chosen this top path. We have exceeded the height of the cliff by 2.6 meters. Are we done? No. All this means is greater than 30 meters, so we are landing on top of the cliff. Question was, where does the ball land? On top of the cliff is not precise enough. So we want to be able to say exactly where does it land. So we have to do another problem with different parameters. We are no longer traveling 20 meters, we're traveling farther than 20 meters up to this landing point, so we don't get to use this value anymore. So let's just set up a whole new set of variables. V0, V, A, T, delta X, X, and Y, just to make sure that we're not confusing things. My initials are staying the same, 13.7, 37.6, 0, negative 9.8. Now, I know that I'm not traveling 20 meters, I'm traveling farther than 20 meters, and I want to actually know how much farther, so I'm actually looking for what is this delta x. But I know now, I have landed up here on top of the cliff, so I now know that my delta y is 30 meters, plus or minus 30 meters is the question. Since I start down here and I'm going up and I'm landing higher, it's going to end up being plus 30 meters. So we can look at that and we can say delta y is equal to v0t plus 1 half at squared. So delta y is equal to 37.6 times time minus 4.9t squared. Delta y is equal to 30. Uh, my beloved quadratic equation, minus 4.9t squared plus 37.6t minus 30 equals 0. We can go over here to the fancy-dancy fancy uh, quadratic equation, and we can say minus 4.9, we can say 37.6, and we can say negative 30, and I end up with two values time is equal to 0 0.904 and 6.77 seconds. Uh-oh. Here's the problem. In the past, we've always had a negative number and a positive number for time, and we've always said, oh, let's just choose the positive one. I get two positive numbers for time. Which one do I choose? Well, in this case, I have to think about what is this telling me. I've asked the question, how much time does it take for the ball to reach 30 meters? And if I go back over here and look at the path, and I say, how much time does it take for the ball to reach a height of 30 meters? Well, it's going to reach 30 meters on the way up and sometime later on the way down. So both of these times are real. And the one that I'm interested in is when it lands. So my time of 6.77 seconds is the one that I'm interested in, not the 1.904 of when it passes that height on the way up. So 6.77 seconds, I can share the time 
6.77 seconds. How long does it take for the ball to get there? And I can say delta x is equal to v0t plus 1 half at squared, but a is 0, so I'm not even going to write it, equals 13.7 times 6.77, which is going to be 13.7 times 6.77, 92.749. So 93 meters. And again, I want to think 93 meters from what? That's the delta x. So that's the 93 meters in this picture. 93 meters is this distance. 93 meters from the start. If I want the distance from the edge of the cliff, then I'm going to have to subtract off the 20 that it traveled before it got to the cliff. So I could say, where does the ball land? I could say 93 meters from launch or 73 meters from edge of cliff. Those are both true. And I've been very explicit about where I'm measuring from. So where does the ball land? I'm happy to tell you 93 meters from the launch point or 73 meters from the edge of the cliff. Final velocity. Final velocity is actually pretty easy now because we're interested in the velocity at this point, which is both of these columns of data. We know that the final velocity here is 13.7 because of the zero acceleration. For this guy, we can just say V equals V zero plus A T, or it's going to equal to 37. 6 minus 9.8 times 6.77. And off the bat, before I even throw that in my calculator, do I expect it to be positive or negative? What's the direction of the y velocity here? Up or down? It's moving down, so I expect this to be negative. So I get 37.6 minus 9.8 times 6.77, and I get negative 28.7 meters per second, negative 28.7 meters per second. And so I can then, again, take those guys. The x is going to be 13.7. The y is going to be negative 28.7. And I can put those together into my quadratic form, or into my Pythagorean theorem, and use my favorite trig function to find final velocity. And if I say 13.7 squared plus 28.7 squared, I'm going to end up with a final velocity of 31.8. Meters per second, and I'm going to say use my favorite trig function, which is tangent theta. So I'm going to say inverse tangent of opposite 28.7 divided by 13.7, and I'm going to get theta is 64.5 degrees, and that my friends, is my final velocity. Ta-da!